Have you ever wondered what happens when desire turns into obsession? When the lines between love and madness blur? What if I told you a tale of forbidden passion that escalated into something far more sinister? Tonight we dive into a story that intertwines love, betrayal, and a chilling crime that shook a family to its core. In this captivating true crime documentary, we unravel the haunting events of a wife's clandestine affair with a stepson, an illicit relationship that spiraled into a dark obsession. But it doesn't stop there. As the infatuation deepens, the story takes a horrific turn, leading to an unthinkable act of murder. Stay with us as we peel back the layers of deception and tragedy, revealing the chilling details of this gripping saga. Setting the scene, we travel to a picturesque suburban neighborhood where deceit would soon overshadow tranquility. Among sprawling lawns and tree-lined streets stands a charming two-story house. This home belongs to Caroline, a woman whose beauty and charm seem to captivate everyone around her. She married David, a successful businessman whose life revolved around providing for his family. David's son from a previous marriage, Alex, came to live with them after the tragic passing of his mother. Caroline, once a promising artist, now found herself playing the role of wife and stepmother, an arrangement that seemed ideal on the surface. Yet beneath the veneer of domestic bliss lay simmering undercurrents of tension and unspoken desires. Caroline, feeling stifled in her new life, began to seek out connections from which she felt estranged. Meanwhile, Alex, grappling with his own grief and searching for stability, formed an unexpected bond with his stepmother. Their relationship, initially innocent and supportive, began to take on a new form, one marred by the shadows of secrets. The dynamics within the family began to shift. David, preoccupied with work, remained oblivious to the subtle changes at home. The warmth of the family dinners gradually turned to silence and smiles became mere facades. The walls of their house, once echoing laughter, now hid whispers of discontent. The neighbors, charmed by Caroline's hospitality and David's success, remained unaware of the storm brewing inside. As days turned to nights, the family's community, bustling with life, carried on, unaware of the fracture forming behind closed doors. In this setting of apparent normalcy, the stage was set for the unfolding drama. The forbidden affair begins. Caroline, enveloped in the loneliness of her seemingly perfect life, found solace in the most unexpected source, Alex. It began innocently enough. An art piece here, a word of encouragement there, offering her comfort in times of solitude. For Alex, Caroline was a warm presence in the cold aftermath of his mother's passing, a beacon in his mournful sea. Yet these interactions slowly transformed, whispers in quiet corners during family gatherings, lingering glances that spoke volumes more than any words ever could. They were drawn to each other, not by choice, but by an invisible pull that both confounded and compelled them. The boundary between care and craving blurred with each passing day. Both Caroline and Alex were adrift in their own emotional tempests, finding in each other a refuge as much as a revelation. Caroline, having long felt shackled by her roles, saw in Alex a reflection of her own yearnings, once buried by responsibilities. Alex, with a heart raw from grief, discovered an unexpected companion in Caroline's understanding eyes. As they confided in each other, sharing hidden dreams and fears, their connection deepened beyond the realm of the appropriate. It wasn't long before stolen moments became their panacea, encounters a secret world away from the watchful eyes of the public. They didn't realize, 
nor did they want to admit that they were nurturing a dangerous flame. It was an affair born from vulnerabilities, exploits of unfound comfort, weaving them tighter into a tapestry of secrecy and desire. The murmurings of their hearts were now shadows cast long in the night, setting the stage for a tale no longer bound by the ordinary conventions of family or fidelity. As they drifted further into this forbidden territory, the undercurrents of passion they shared became impossible to ignore, marking the true beginning of their ill-fated liaison. The obsession takes hold like an insidious vine wrapping itself around Caroline's heart, squeezing tight, intent on consuming every bit of rational thought. At first, she merely thought of Alex as someone who understood her, who saw her not just as a wife or a stepmother, but as a woman with her own dreams and desires. But as time went on, her feelings morphed into something darker, something she could neither name nor control. Each day without him felt like an eternity, and every moment spent apart ignited an insatiable longing that burned fiercely within her. Caroline began to orchestrate their encounters with meticulous precision. Plans became woven around the predictability of David's work schedule, ensuring moments alone with Alex became more frequent. Ordinary routines were reimagined to contain whispers of forbidden meetings. She started leaving notes for Alex in hidden places, mere words laced with promises between the lines. To everyone else, they were simply living in the same house, yet in her mind, they were like conspirators in a grand design, a secret universe existing solely between them. Caroline's behavior started to show cracks that hinted at her consuming obsession. She grew more detached from friends, gently distancing herself from anyone who might question her newfound secrecy. At family gatherings, her gaze would search for Alex across the room, eyes lingering on him a moment too long. She found herself studying every nuance of his being, memorizing the contours of his smile, the timbre of his laughter. Her art, once a gentle outlet for creativity, now became an ode to Alex. Sketches of his face filled her canvas, every stroke a testament to her fixation. But this was no ordinary love story. This was a descent, a slow unraveling of her once steady self into a sea where lines between love and obsession blurred beyond recognition. She began crafting scenarios where Alex would need her, creating situations that allowed her to step into his life as an essential presence. The more her world contracted to include only Alex, the more she felt alive, yet trapped in a self-imposed labyrinth of desire. These feelings, intoxicating and dangerous, were mirrored by subtle changes in Alex too. Though he may have realized the intensity of Caroline's emotions, the thrill of their secret kept him engaged in their dance. But every secret carries the weight of its discovery, and their hidden world was no exception. Obsession, once a hidden ember, now flamed into something undeniable, threatening to engulf not only Caroline's life, but the very foundation of their family. As the days drifted into nights, each filled with clandestine whispers and longing glances, the looming presence of their shared obsession cast a shadow, heralding the unforeseen consequences that lurked just beyond. The strain on family dynamics grew like a silent storm, manifesting in subtle yet profound shifts within the household. David, engrossed in his business affairs, began noticing the change in atmosphere, though he couldn't quite pinpoint its source. The laughter that once filled the home became rare, conversations grew stilted, and a palpable tension hung in the air. It started with a question nagging in David's mind. Was it simply the stress of work 
causing his feelings of unease? Or was there something more lurking beneath the surface? Caroline, his once attentive wife, seemed increasingly distant, her attention often adrift. Meanwhile, Alex, who once sought David's guidance, now appeared aloof, as if harboring secrets he couldn't share. David found himself as an outsider in his own home, unable to connect with the family he cherished so deeply. Attempts to bridge the gap were met with polite smiles from Caroline and noncommittal answers from Alex. And then there were the unanswered questions. Caroline's sudden need for privacy, the whispered conversations she had when she thought he wasn't listening, and the odd hours she spent in a studio. His suspicions, while growing, were tempered by a desire to trust. But trust, like fine glass, once shattered, can never be perfectly restored. David's journal entries from this time reflect his turmoil. He wrote candidly of the emptiness he felt, lamenting the loss of warmth and connection. I am losing them. He scribbled one night, his pen hesitating over the page. Or maybe they're lost already. An entry from Alex provided another perspective. Scrawled hastily, it spoke of confusion and guilt, the pain of living a double life weighing heavily on his young shoulders. In one poignant note, he questioned his choices, wondering if the temporary relief they provided was worth the lasting damage. Caroline, too, left traces of her internal battle, though her diary entries revealed a woman torn between her familial responsibilities and the consuming passion that blinded her to consequences. She pondered over her actions, yet found herself powerless to change course. The heart is a funny thing, she wrote one evening. It wants what it wants, reason be damned. Confrontations were inevitable, though often unspoken. David, though unsure, began seeking small reassurances, a touch, a look, anything that spoke of their former unity. Yet Caroline evaded, her responses practiced and controlled. She crafted a narrative of busyness, of needing space, though her heart raced with the fear of her secret unraveling. The household, once a harmonious blend, now teetered on the brink of collapse, each member acutely aware of the distance yet unsure how to bridge it. It was a dance around truths unacknowledged, a silent acknowledgement of the fracture growing wider with each passing day. In the absence of clarity, David grappled with the choice between confrontation and denial, each bearing its own set of risks. Yet as the days wore on, the truth of their unraveling became impossible to ignore. The family, once bound by shared love, now tread on a delicate path, the shadow of the affair casting a chill that threatened to overshadow their every interaction. Red flags and ominous signs emerged like haunting whispers in a quiet room, yet they were swept under the rug, ignored in a misguided hope for normalcy. Caroline's sudden penchant for solitude, often cloaked under the guise of artistic inspiration, should have raised alarm bells. Her eyes, once vibrant, now held the shadow of a burden she hid from the world. Then there was Alex, whose behavior shifted from seeking solace in family to a guarded secrecy that lined his interactions. Late night footsteps, hushed laughter behind closed doors, and the unexplainable tension that filled the air were all indicators that something was amiss. But the most glaring sign lay in their shared silence. Families typically open about their daily lives, transformed into a household of whispered conversations and secrets. David's attempts to pierce the veil of silence only met resistance. He chose to believe Caroline's assurances, her explanations filled with just enough sincerity to lull his concerns. Yet beneath the surface, the truth festered. Caroline's friends noticed a distance too, 
a subtle withdrawal from social engagements. A confidante might offer an offhand comment about how different she seemed, how her laughter no longer reached her eyes. But little did they know, these moments were more than mere peculiarities. They were cries for help swallowed by the abyss of denial. Experts warn that when red flags are dismissed, they create chasms that allow destructive behaviors to flourish unchecked. The subtle cues unexplained absences, shifts in mood or routine, a partner's sudden disinterest in shared activities, are often precursors to deeper issues. Recognizing and addressing these signs early on could have steered Caroline and Alex away from the path they tread. It takes courage to confront these uncomfortable truths, to face the shadows lurking within seemingly ordinary moments. If someone had spoken up, had questioned the rising walls between them, the story may have unfolded differently. Professional guidance advises an open dialogue, voicing concerns gently yet firmly. It emphasizes the importance of seeking clarity, creating an environment where secrets find no shadows to hide in. But in this tale, the chorus of unvoiced suspicions grew louder, echoing through the walls of their home. The ignored signs loomed like storm clouds, foreboding a tempest that would leave devastation in its wake. As Caroline and Alex found themselves deeper in their shared secret world, the facade of normalcy teetered dangerously on the edge. If only they had listened to the whispers of caution, they might have glimpsed the darkness creeping closer, a shadow cast over the heart of their family. The turning point arrives one seemingly innocuous evening as Caroline stares into the mirror, the reflection staring back a stranger to her own eyes. That day, a fleeting interaction with Alex had sparked a dissonance so profound it reverberated within her, a moment when the invisible thread connecting them felt frayed. Earlier, as dusk descended upon their quiet neighborhood, an unexpected visit from an old college friend awakened memories within Caroline, memories of laughter and freedom that contrasted sharply with her current life, a reminder of dreams long abandoned. But beyond the surface, something deeper stirred. Alex was distant, his attention briefly drawn to someone else, and it was this small shift that sent Caroline spiraling into the depths of obsessive fear. The realization that her hold on what she cherished most was slipping, propelled her into emotional chaos. In the secrecy of her thoughts, she rationalized the growing need to assert control over this unraveling fantasy. A narrative emerged, one that justified what she would later deem necessary to preserve the connection with Alex at all costs. The echoes of their intimate moments haunted her, fueling an urgency that bordered on desperation. It was a tangled web of passion and necessity, a toxic blend that blinded her to the boundaries of right and wrong. Rational thought gave way to an insidious whisper, a voice that assured her drastic action was the only path to secure her world. She became convinced that removing all impediments was an act of love, a testament to the depth of her feelings. Nights found her pacing the dim corridors, the solitude of her studio embracing her as she plotted, her mind a labyrinth of dark fantasies and misguided intentions. The tension escalated, every glance from Alex scrutinized, every interaction dissected for signs of wavering affection. Caroline, once a woman defined by grace, now found herself consumed by the specter of doubt and possession. This pivotal moment marked the point of no return, as Caroline's perception of reality bent to fit the narrative she created. In her mind, the stage was set, and with it, the chilling plan to eliminate any threat to her precious connection. 
a plan that, unbeknownst to her, would not only lead to unimaginable consequences, but also seal the fate of everyone involved. Planning the unthinkable, Caroline found herself in a chilling dance with darkness, her once warm heart now a vessel for sinister intentions. Gripped by an all-consuming obsession, she believed that to preserve her world with Alex, she had to eradicate any threat to it. Her mind, once filled with vibrant art, now carefully constructed a plan as cold and calculated as the winter night. The descent into plotting such a horrific act began with whispers from that insidious voice within, urging her to act with a sense of misguided love. Her motivations twisted into a perverse logic where eliminating obstacles became a declaration of devotion. The deeper she delved, the more intricately her plan unfolded, like a tapestry woven with threads of delusion and desperation. Caroline meticulously examined every aspect of David's routine, identifying weaknesses in the fabric of their family life that she could exploit. Her preparations became an art form, a macabre symphony where every note played in a favor. Late at night, when the world was asleep, she would sit at a table, the eerie glow of a lamp casting long shadows as she sketched outlines and annotated maps, movements mapped meticulously onto pieces of paper, each line a testament to her unyielding resolve. She imagined scenarios, rehearsed alibis, and noted the tools she would need. Her studio became both a sanctuary and a war room, transformed into a place where reason surrendered to madness. She immersed herself in research, studying crime novels and true crime documentaries, gaining insights into forensic countermeasures, their lessons chillingly absorbed. Her mind adapted, adopting strategies that those who walked this path before her had utilized. It was a chilling transformation from artist to architect of death, where every thought was a step closer to the irreversible. As the days turned into weeks, Caroline's interactions with David became increasingly calculated. Her demeanor, a mask of normalcy, hiding the tempest within. She learned to smile through family dinners, to laugh at jokes that no longer amused her, all while nurturing a growing darkness. The reality of her actions failed to pierce the bubble of her obsession. In her narrative, Alex was the prize, and achieving their shared world justified the sacrifices. Her diary, once an outlet for creativity, now held pages scrawled with details of a grim scheme, each entry a chilling reminder of the gravity of her intentions. Caroline had become her own captor, trapped in a twisted vision, her resolve cold as ice, her heart beating to a rhythm only she could hear. And so, like a storm gathering strength, the contours of her plan sharpened. She convinced herself it was the only way, her resolve unyielding as she stood on the precipice of her own making. Unbeknownst to her, the path she had chosen would become a shadow that would envelop them all, shattering the very connection she sought to preserve and leaving echoes of horror that would linger long after. The fateful day of the murder dawned with an eerie calm, the kind that precedes a violent storm. It was a crisp morning, the sun casting a golden hue over the quiet neighborhood, its warmth deceivingly peaceful. Caroline awoke with a singular focus, her mind a cacophony of thoughts, all aligning toward the dark task she had meticulously planned. Her heart pounded in her chest, a relentless drumbeat that echoed her determination. David, oblivious to the gravity of his last day, went about his routine, leaving early for a business meeting, never suspecting that things were amiss. Caroline watched him leave, her expression unreadable, biding her time for the moment she had orchestrated to unfold. 
The hours crept by, each ticking second bringing her closer to the irreversible. As the afternoon sun waned, Alex returned from his day's activities, his footsteps echoing in the stillness of the house. Caroline greeted him with a smile, the kind that betrayed nothing of her inner turmoil. She suggested they spend some time together, a tradition they honored on rare occasions. They settled into the living room, the cozy setting a stark contrast to the sinister intentions lurking beneath Caroline's demeanor. As twilight enveloped the day, the air thickened with an unspoken tension. Caroline, with a gentle yet deliberate gesture, handed Alex a drink, their small talk punctuated by the ticking of the wall clock, a metronome counting down to horror. In her mind, the plan unfurled like a macabre symphony, each note a step in the dreadful dance she had chosen. Alex, unsuspecting, sipped his drink, unaware of the carefully concealed sedative that began to weave its way into his consciousness. Caroline watched, her heart a tumult of anticipation and dread, as Alex's eyelids grew heavy, his movements sluggish. As sleep claimed him, she moved with quiet efficiency, her actions a grim parody of care. She positioned him gently, ensuring he remained oblivious to the darkness encroaching upon him. The house fell into a slow, somber silence, the quiet only broken by Caroline's calculated breaths. And then with a chilling resolve, she enacted the final phase of her plan. It was swift, brutal, a convergence of all her pent-up fear and obsession unleashed in a single horrific moment. In that isolated, suffocating space, she severed the ties that bound their reality to the world outside. The brutality of the act reverberated through the stillness, a violent crescendo that left no room for doubt about its finality. In the aftermath, the weight of her actions settled over Caroline like a shroud, the realization of her irreversible choice dawning with a cold clarity. The house, once a haven, now stood witness to the darkness she had conjured, its walls absorbing the echoes of chaos. Caroline, in her solitude, faced the specter of what she had done. The world beyond carried on in blissful ignorance of the atrocity that had shattered the veneer of normalcy. Yet within those walls, the air was thick with disbelief, a chilling testament to the depths of human obsession and the devastating cost of what once might have been called love. The shocking discovery unfolded like a nightmare etched into the fabric of the tranquil neighborhood. It began innocently enough, with David returning home that evening, unaware of the horrors that awaited him. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows over the familiar streets, David approached his home, the place he believed held the warmth and safety of his family's embrace. But as he stepped through the door, a sense of unease washed over him. The house, usually alive with the echoes of daily life, was eerily quiet, the silence pressing in from all sides. Calling out for his wife and son yielded no response, only the deafening stillness that seemed to scream for attention. His heart pounding in his chest, David ventured further inside, searching for the source of the unsettling calm. It was in the living room that he found them. The scene that greeted him was beyond comprehension, a tableau of devastation that defied his understanding of reality. Caroline, once the vibrant heart of their home, stood there, a shell of her former self, her eyes vacant and haunted, and Alex, so full of life, lay still, a tragic figure in the space that was meant for comfort and love. The realization hit David like a tidal wave, the enormity of what had transpired crashing over him, leaving him gasping for air. The neighbors, drawn by David's anguished cries, gathered outside, 
their hushed whispers mingling with the growing murmur of sirens approaching in the distance. The community, once a tight-knit sanctuary of shared joys and sorrows, found itself unravelling in the face of an unthinkable reality. As law enforcement arrived, their presence, a stark contrast to the suburban serenity, marked the beginning of a process that would ripple through every corner of their lives. Investigators meticulously pieced together the fragments of the tragedy, each discovery deepening the chasm of disbelief and fear that spread through the community. Interviews with law enforcement painted a picture of chaos and urgency. Officers and detectives grappling with the enormity of the crime while the media descended upon the neighborhood, cameras capturing the grim reality for all to see. News reports broadcasted the unfolding drama, their headlines shocking the world with details so chilling they seemed ripped from the pages of fiction. The nation watched spellbound and horrified as the once idyllic facade of suburban life crumbled under the weight of a dark and twisted love. In the face of such horrifying truths, questions hung heavy in the air. How could this happen? What signs were missed? And most haunting of all, could it have been prevented? The community, now a microcosm of grief and bewilderment, searched for answers, for a way to reconcile the people they knew with the unimaginable actions that had shattered their reality. The shock of discovery lingered like a spectre, a reminder of the fragile nature of trust and the darkness that can dwell within the human heart, lurking just beneath the surface. The investigation commenced with the cold efficiency of seasoned detectives arriving at a crime scene. As the sun rose on a neighborhood still reeling from the shock of tragedy, law enforcement took charge, transforming the once vibrant home into a hub of intense scrutiny. Yellow tape fluttered in the morning breeze marking the boundaries within which the story of a shattered family began to unravel. Investigators methodically combed through the scene, each step calculated, each piece of evidence meticulously catalogued, as if every fiber held a whisper of the truth they sought. The room, frozen in time, bore silent witness to the horror that had unfolded, its every corner a potential key to unlocking the mystery. Photographs were taken, capturing the chilling silence of the aftermath, each flash illuminating spaces where laughter once echoed. Forensic experts descended upon the house with precision, their tools probing for hidden truths beneath the surface. They dusted for fingerprints, collected trace evidence, and examined every article with a discerning eye. The smallest details were scrutinized pieces of fabric, fragments of shattered lives, each holding a potential clue to the narrative that lay beneath. Meanwhile, detectives began the arduous task of piecing together the events leading to one family's undoing. They turned to neighbors, friends, and acquaintances, their questions weaving through the community like a needle through fabric, stitching together alibis timelines and whispers of motive. Caroline, now the central figure of this harrowing tale, was brought in for questioning. Her demeanor, a blend of haunted resignation and evasive clarity, presented a unique challenge. She spoke of the days leading up to that fateful moment, her words carefully chosen, yet laden with the weight of her actions. In the stark interrogation room, Detectives pressed her for details, probing the layers of her involvement. The challenge lay not just in extracting the truth, but in navigating the labyrinth of emotions that accompanied it. Alex's untimely death was a puzzle, each piece seemingly at odds with the next. As Caroline's narrative unfolded, contradictions surfaced, requiring investigators to delve deeper into the tangles of her story. David, though heartbroken and bewildered, 
also faced the barrage of questions, his grief palpable as he recounted the days leading to turmoil. His account, while honest, offered little in the way of clarity, his shock mirroring that of the detectives. As the investigation progressed, breakthroughs emerged in unexpected places. A series of cryptic diary entries, hidden away in Caroline's studio, offered glimpses into her spiraling obsession, revealing a chilling glimpse into her fragmented psyche. These entries, laced with raw emotion, hinted at the depth of her fixation, her desires bleeding into plans both desperate and dark. The timeline of her relationship with Alex began to crystallize, the patterns of their secret world uncovering motives obscured by denial and passion. Mapping their clandestine interactions, investigators charted a course from initial infatuation to the descent into chaos, each point on the map a poignant revelation. Yet with every answer came more questions, each discovery layering complexity upon an already convoluted narrative. Experts in behavioral analysis were called upon to decode the motivations behind such a heinous act, their insights illuminating the shadows that obscured understanding. They spoke of how love, when twisted by obsession, can morph into something unrecognizable, blurring the lines between victim and perpetrator. As days turned to weeks, the investigation pressed on, each step forward met with new challenges. Evidence continued to trickle in, adding depth to a tapestry woven from grief, deception, and shattered dreams. Through it all, the detectives, driven by the quest for justice, persevered, their resolve unyielding as they sought the heart of a story that defied rationale, a tale that echoed far beyond the confines of that quiet suburban street. The unraveling confession unfolded with the piercing intensity of a long-awaited storm finally breaking. Caroline, who had once donned a mask of composure, now stood exposed under the relentless scrutiny of both law enforcement and her own consciousness. In the sterile confines of the interrogation room, an unyielding light above cast stark shadows across her face, highlighting the tumultuous emotions that lay beneath her guarded exterior. The walls, blank and indifferent, seemed to close in on her, reflecting the isolation of her predicament. It began with subtle cracks in her carefully constructed facade, moments of hesitation that betrayed the storm of guilt swirling within. Despite her initial attempts to weave a narrative devoid of culpability, the weight of her actions mounted with each passing day, pressing down on her until denial became insupportable. Slowly, the layers of deception she had built around her obsession began to peel away. The evidence, meticulously gathered by detectives, painted a vivid picture of her involvement, each piece a thread unraveling her tightly knit story. A particular diary entry, overlooked by Caroline in her meticulous planning, laid bare the depths of her fixation, a chilling testament to the descent of her rationality. Realizing the futility of resistance against the mounting tide of proof, Caroline's defenses crumbled in a moment of profound revelation. It happened in the dimly lit courtroom, the atmosphere charged with anticipation and a sense of impending truth. As her family and the community she once belonged to watched with bated breath, Caroline took the stand, her demeanor a fragile mix of defiance and contrition. Her voice, at first steady, faltered as she began to recount the events leading to that horrific day. She spoke of her obsession, its origins rooted in vulnerability, loneliness, and an unrequited desire for validation. Her words, each a painful admission, echoed through the silent courtroom, resonating with an audience hungry for understanding. 
as she unveiled the tapestry of emotions and motives that had driven her to the brink. The courtroom bore witness not just to her confession, but to a deeply human struggle, a desperate attempt to reconcile who she was with what she had done. Caroline's justifications, though deeply flawed, were laced with the undeniable humanity of a woman lost to her own obsessions. She painted herself as a tragic figure, ensnared by love's darker side, caught in the throes of a passion that had consumed her sense of self. There was a haunting sincerity in her plea, a glimpse of the Caroline who once dreamt of art and love, untethered by the chains of reality. Her confession was not only an acknowledgement of guilt, but a release, a cathartic surrender to the truth she could no longer evade. As the echoes of her words faded, the courtroom sat in stunned silence, bearing the weight of her revelations. The unraveling of Caroline's confession marked not just the conclusion of her story, but an indelible moment for all those touched by the tragedy. In the aftermath, the community grappled with the raw honesty of her admissions, seeking solace in the clarity offered by her words even as they mourned the loss and destruction left in its wake. Through the lens of accountability, the haunting tale of the wife's secret affair and its devastating consequences found its somber resolution in the finality of her confession. The trial commenced amidst a maelstrom of public intrigue and media sensation, casting a spotlight on the courtroom that held within it the shattered remnants of one family's descent into darkness. The halls were lined with eager reporters, their cameras flashing incessantly as they captured every entry and exit, each headline more sensational than the last. Inside, the atmosphere was a blend of somber anticipation and palpable tension, the air thick with the weight of what was to come. As the proceedings began, the prosecution wasted no time in presenting their case, methodically laying out the grim details of the crime. They painted Caroline as a woman driven by obsession, meticulously recounting the planning, the execution, and the chilling aftermath of her actions. Their strategy hinged on the array of evidence, collected diary entries, forensic details, and witness testimonies that coalesced into a damning narrative of premeditation and malice. The defense, however, took a different approach, focusing on Caroline's psychological state. They brought forth expert witnesses who spoke of her fragile mental health, her descent into obsession as an unintended consequence of emotional turmoil and unresolved grief. They argued for understanding, a plea not for innocence, but for acknowledgement of the mitigating circumstances that clouded her judgment. Expert analyses provided insight into the psychological intricacies of Caroline's mind, the obsessions that twisted her perceptions and drove her to commit the unthinkable. Courtroom sketches, stark and evocative, depicted the tension and drama unfolding within those walls, capturing Caroline's subdued demeanor and the gravity of each testimony delivered. As each side presented their arguments, the jury listened intently, acutely aware of the monumental task before them. The trial itself became a spectacle, a dramatic unfolding of human frailty and the law's quest for justice. Public opinion swayed with each day's revelations. The community divided between those who sought retribution and those who whispered of empathy. The media frenzy reached a fever pitch, broadcasting every twist and turn, their analyses echoing in living rooms and office spaces, turning the trial into a national discourse. As the trial drew to its conclusion, closing arguments resonated through the courtroom each side making their final bid for the jury's favor. The prosecution reiterated the facts, the cold methodicality of Caroline's actions, 
a testament to her culpability. The defense, with a final heartfelt appeal, asked for compassion, urging the jury to see beyond the surface to the fractured soul beneath. After days of deliberation, the jury returned with their verdict, the room silent save for the collective breaths held in anticipation. Guilty, they declared, on the count of murder in the first degree, their decision a culmination of the evidence weighed and the emotions considered. The sentence handed down was life imprisonment without parole, a resolution both expected and devastating. The courtroom, once abuzz with speculation and fervor, now sat in contemplative silence, the reality of the outcome settling over all in attendance. The public and media reactions were swift and varied, some hailing the decision as justice served, others lamenting the absence of leniency in the face of emotional distress. Analysis of the trial's outcome filled the airwaves, dissecting the intricacies of the case and the implications for those left behind. In the end, the trial and its verdict closed a chapter marked by tragedy, a reminder of the complex interplay between human emotion and the law. The story, though reaching its legal conclusion, left a lingering resonance, the echoes of its dark truths reverberating through the public consciousness as a cautionary tale of love gone awry and the irrevocable cost of obsession. In the aftermath of the shocking events, the impact of the crime rippled through the lives of those left behind, its echoes resonating far beyond the walls of the once idyllic family home. The surviving family members struggled to pick up the pieces, each grappling with their own sense of loss, betrayal and guilt. David, once a pillar of strength and stability, found himself adrift in a sea of confusion and heartache. The foundation of his life, his family, had been irrevocably altered, leaving him questioning his own role in the tragedy. Friends and colleagues noticed a change in him, the spark in his eyes dulled by an overwhelming grief that seemed to weigh heavily on his shoulders. He withdrew from social circles, his presence a shadow of the vibrant man he once was. Therapy became a lifeline, providing a space where he could begin to navigate the complex emotions that engulfed him. The community, too, bore the scars of the crime, its fabric strained by the knowledge that darkness had lurked so close to home. Neighbors who had once shared in each other's joys and sorrows now found themselves at a loss, struggling to reconcile the people they had known with the horrific events that had unfolded. Trust was a casualty of the crime, leaving many questioning their own judgments and the nature of the bonds they had formed. Social gatherings, once lively and full of laughter, were now tinged with a somber awareness of what had been lost. The local school, where Alex had been a student, became a place of both mourning and resilience. Teachers and classmates spoke of the void left by his absence, the empty desk a poignant reminder of his once vibrant presence. Counselors were brought in to help students process their grief, offering support and guidance as they navigated their own emotional journeys. Community leaders sought to bring healing through open dialogues and initiatives aimed at strengthening connections and fostering understanding. Interviews conducted with friends and acquaintances painted a picture of a family that had seemed picture perfect on the surface, masking the turmoil lurking beneath. Many expressed shock and disbelief, struggling to comprehend how such a tragedy could have occurred. Yet amid the sorrow, there were stories of resilience, tales of individuals coming together to support one another in the wake of unimaginable loss. The crime served as a stark reminder of the fragility of human relationships, prompting introspection and a renewed focus on mental health and well-being. Counseling services 
saw an increase in demand as individuals sought to address their own struggles and vulnerabilities, recognizing the importance of confronting issues before they could fester into something more sinister. In the broader community, conversations around mental health and the signs of obsession gained prominence, encouraging open discussions and increasing awareness of the subtle red flags that could precede a tragedy. Workshops and seminars were organized, emphasizing the importance of reaching out and seeking help, creating a safe space for individuals to share their experiences and learn from each other. As the community slowly began to heal, the legacy of the crime lingered as a cautionary tale, a reminder of the complexities of human emotion and the importance of nurturing healthy relationships. The darkness that had once overshadowed the neighborhood gradually gave way to light. The bonds of community strengthened by shared resolve and understanding. Yet for those closest to the tragedy, the journey of healing was ongoing, a testament to the enduring impact of a crime that had forever altered the course of their lives. In summary, this haunting tale of a wife's forbidden affair with her stepson and the grim trajectory towards murder serves as a stark reminder of the complexities entangled within human relationships. It illustrates how unchecked desires can spiral into dangerous obsessions, blurring the lines between love and madness. As we journeyed through the unsettling dynamics of this fractured family, we witnessed how silence and denial can lead to catastrophic consequences. This tragedy compels us to reflect on the nature of desire, trust, and the shadowy corners of the human psyche where darkness can thrive unnoticed. It challenges us to acknowledge the red flags in our own lives, to confront uncomfortable truths, and to seek help when faced with emotional turmoil. As viewers, we must consider the lessons embedded in this story. How love, when twisted by obsession, can destroy the very foundations of who we are. The chilling events we've uncovered remind us of the importance of communication, the need for empathy, and the value of addressing mental health with openness and understanding. Before you go, I encourage you to share your thoughts on the